Exodus chapter 8, verses 8 through 10. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right. I ask you to read together with me again as I say often, if I drop out, you continue to the completion of verse number 10. All right. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right. Ready? Read. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants? Uh huh. Let's have a simple word on this morning, but it's very powerful. And what the Lord told me to teach the church is a lesson from Pharaoh. A lesson from Pharaoh. And my subtext is one word, tomorrow. (laughs) Tomorrow. Lord God, we thank you now for this great word. And Lord, we pray that you would move as you have done And so many times in the past. Take over this house, Lord. This is your house. Your sanctuary. And we are the sheep of your pasture. Now, Lord, we ask you to feed us bread of heaven. Feed us, Lord, till we want no more. And we'll forever be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And it is so. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. As you're being seated, touch your neighbor and say tomorrow. 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 As we... began to look here at our our text and see that so many things have already taken place in the life of Moses and in the history of the children of Israel. So much and so that God has, according to his word, heard the cries of his people. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I serve a God that can hear my cry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. May not always seem like my prayer is getting through, but I'm glad that right in the nick of time, God is always there right on time. May not somebody say it in the song, come when you want him, but he always right on time. And I, I can bear witness to that fact that God is always right on time. It teaches us to have character. It teaches us to have Discipline. It teaches us to have 
patience sometimes that we don't always get it when we want it and how we want it. But we know that because God is our Father and we're his children, that he's still going to see about us. So here it is. We see how the master has heard the cries of his people. Over 400 years of bondage on the hard taskmaster, laboring in the hot sun, not having uh, barely any food to eat. But nevertheless, God took care of his people. So much and so that uh, the midwives began to, to look at the children of Israel and, and let the, the Pharaoh know, look, uh, seem like the, the, the more uh, that we persecute them and the, the harder the labor is, they, they increasing more and more. And that's the way God works in our lives that he allow hardships to come and he allow haters to come and he allow opposition to come. But in the self-same hour, <laughs> he'll provide a way of escape. And, and, and even in the midst of our trial, even in the midst of our persecution, he'll begin to bless. He'll begin to prosper us. He'll begin to let us flourish in the midst of a dry land so that his name will be glorified. So here it is. As we look here, we can see, amen, how Moses was prepared. And sometimes God's plans for your life will take you through strange places. Amen. Oh, y'all act like y'all ain't never been through some strange places. I say sometimes God's preparation for your life will lead you into some diverse places. How in the world? Son of a slave, the one that's being oppressed through by the awesome hand of God is literally raised up in the house of the king. Raised up in the house of the Pharaoh. And not only that, but he's, he's God is so awesome, he didn't even take him off his, his, his mother's pap. Still let him nurse from his, his own mother's breast milk. Showing you how God will do things now. When you, when, you, when you really understand the God that you serve, you ain't got to try to fix it. Just keep on serving God. You ain't got to try to work it out. Just keep on living for God. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. We'll put you right in the midst of your enemies. And will confound them. They won't even recognize who you are. <laughs> They'll be uh, 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 given into your bosom and given into your life. And don't even recognize this is the one I'm supposed to be hating. <laughs> this is the one I don't supposed to like right here. This is the one that I'm supposed to be mad at. Coming up on the ladder right. It's a special type of fire. It's an all consuming fire. A special kind of fire. Auntie <laughs> Dean that went into. The fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys. I'm 
talking about a fire that'll put other fire out. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's, it's a fire that God possesses that's so powerful it'll put out other fire. Power of God, the Son of God, walking around in the midst of the fiery furnace with the creed. Good morning. Well, we would just love to invite you and give you an opportunity to sow into this powerful ministry God has blessed us with. All you have to do is log on to elvm.org. That's www.elvm.org and click on the give link to donate to this great ministry. Listen, I am so excited about what God is doing. This is our year for manifestation. And guess what? You can be a part of it too. But we would love for you to just make a commitment now to, to donate to a ministry that's going places and doing things for the Lord. For your gift of just $10 or more, we'll be glad to send you one of your choice, either a DVD or a CD. So whatever it is, we would just like for you to make your request known and we would love to sew back into you. We love you. God bless you. God will put you right there in the midst and will cause your enemy to be a blessing to you. Moses prepared in the house of the Pharaoh and through God's direction, he fell into some hard times and messed around and killed one of the guards there of the Pharaoh and was sent out on the backside of the desert, yes. fleeing, running from his life. Yes. And in the midst of his exile, mm -hmm. God met him. Sometimes God has to get you by yourself. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but I'm talking to somebody here that has been in a desert place. And I want to encourage you to know that it's still God's will. Don't, don't, don't get distressed. Don't, don't feel like God has left. God hadn't left you. It's still according to his will. In your desert place, God can talk to you. God can get your attention. God can speak into your life. Whereas when you was around all of your loved ones and all the comforts of life, a lot of times you wasn't seeking God. You had too much stuff going on. Had too many distractions going on to really hear a word from the Lord. But it's the, the desert place yes, sometimes that brings us into communication yeah. with our Heavenly yeah. Father. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've been in some desert places. Yeah. It's been some times in my life where I couldn't find my friends. I couldn't talk to my family. I couldn't talk to my brothers. It's been some times in my life I couldn't even talk to my wife. Nobody but me and God. Couldn't tell nobody else about it but the master. But I'm telling you that it was in those times that I got to know him in another level. I got to know him in a whole nother, a whole nother revelation. In your desert place. In your desert experience. God revealed himself to Moses in a way that he hadn't revealed himself to no other man. Moses saw the glory of God exposed in a, in a bush that was on fire, but he had been in the desert and seen several bushes on fire, but the peculiar thing about this one is that it wouldn't be consumed. How y'all about shot a reminiscent of the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. When, amen, the Holy Ghost lit 
on the first church as cloven tongues of fire, but they were not consumed. But yet and still, it was the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It was that same fire that Jeremiah said it feels just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Hey, I, I don't believe you hear me today. Sometimes that fire, it'll manifest itself. Sometimes it's like fire. It'll make you move sometimes. Sometimes that fire. Hallelujah. It'll make you cry when ain't nobody messing with you. Sometimes that fire will make you laugh when ain't nothing funny. It's a special type of fire. It's an all-consuming fire. A special kind of fire. Auntie Dean that went into the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys. I'm talking about a fire that'll put other fire out. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's, it's a fire that God possesses. That's so powerful, it'll put out other fire. Power of God, the Son of God, walking around in the midst of the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys. He looked over in there and said, I don't know, but one of them looked like the Son of God. Woo! Hallelujah! It's a special kind of fire that God revealed in the desert place. Now here it is. We see that God got Moses' attention and sent him on his mission. I want to let you know today, saints of God, that God will never send you on a mission without first preparing you. Before God ever sends you to do a job, there is always a period of preparation. Now hear me now. It may not be what you expect. Your preparation period may not be something that you enjoy. Because during the preparation time is usually putting you in a place that you're uncomfortable. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. During your preparation time is getting you to understand that God is your source. That's what the preparation is for. The preparation is to get your attention enough to recognize that it's not by power nor by might, but it's by his spirit. Yeah, so sometimes God have to pull you aside. Yeah, I know you can preach. Yeah, I know you got gifts. I know you got abilities. I know you got talent. But for where I'm taking you, I need to make sure you know you got me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's, that's where the true ability lies. It's not about you. But it is about the God that's in you. And before you hit that next dimension and that next level, God said, I got to make sure you understand what you got on the inside. I got to make sure you understand really what you're working with. So here it is. God has sent Moses after revealing himself to Moses by special miracles and signs and wonders. And he said, now, son, I want you to go and stand before Pharaoh. 
Now, I understand everybody doesn't have the same assignment. And I have to say that. I have to temper that because you cannot compare your preparation with your brother's preparation. Huh? Can I get an amen? Oh, God, help us. I say you cannot compare your period of preparation with your sister's period of preparation. Yeah, 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 because see, what happens is, is we'll get to being so anxious and we'll get to getting so aggravated and we'll get to crying to God and, I, Lord, I don't see why I got to go through this. And I, I know I looked over there and, you know, she done already, you know, uh, got married and had three kids and I ain't even found nobody yet. Uh, ain't nobody found me. And you don't know what God is doing in your life. God is, is trying to produce some character in you to be able to wait on him and not be so anxious to get tied up with another person, but to realize that he'll provide for you. Realize that he'll be your source. Realize that he'll be your comforter. But so many times we, we get to look around and trying to compare ourselves to somebody else. And God said, no, you, 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 can't, you can't compare yourself because I got a different purpose for your life. And there it is. We see Moses and Aaron. God sent them out together, but guess what? They both had two different purposes, see. Don't care how much uh, Aaron was there with Moses, Aaron wasn't the leader. Aaron, guess what? Aaron didn't go through the same process. Oh, can I help somebody? Uh -huh. Are you understanding? Even though Aaron was right there with, 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 with Moses, as they went to the Pharaoh, but God didn't reveal himself to but one man, and that was Moses. So you have to understand that you cannot get so caught up in the way things look and why I got to deal with this or why I can't have it like this or why she got this and I didn't get that or what. No, God, God is a sovereign king. We don't have the right to, di to dictate to God. Yeah, this is the same God that spoke and the sun began to shine and the, the moon began and the constellations came out of nowhere. It's the same God that blew his breath and the breath of lives came into man, and man became a living soul. It's the same God. Here it is. You want to get an attitude because it seemed like somebody else got a little bit more than you. Well, you don't know what it cost that person. Woo, glory to God. I say you don't know what it cost them for the anointing that they have on their life. Here it is. You want to catch an attitude, but you ain't willing to go through what it takes to get that same level of anointing. God sent Moses and Aaron together. The word of God declares that they had to go as a charge from God to go tell Pharaoh God said, let his people go. When he got there, Pharaoh thought there was a joke. <laughs> let the people go. Okay, I'm going to give you a little time, but I want you to hurry up and get out of my presence now because <laughs> you got an audacity to come before me and make this kind of demand. 
Well, it's proud time again, and I am now petitioning for those of you that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sin. Well, there's no greater time than the present. All you have to do is just accept in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, and he is ready and willing to come in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will, let me in. I'll come in and I'll sup with him. In other words, Jesus is ready and he's willing to come in and to be a part of your life if you're willing to let him do so. Well, it's just as easy as repeating a few words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I ask you now to forgive me for all of my sins. I'm sorry for whatever is done I've done in my life that's against your will and against your word. And I repent and I ask you now to forgive me. Come into my life. Make me a new creature. Well, if you can believe what you just said, then it's already done. Now, what your responsibility is, is to join a Bible-based church that will teach you how to grow and to become the warrior and the winner that Christ is meant for you to be. God bless you. I invite you to come right here to the First Albany Deliverance Cathedral on 1506 South Slappy Boulevard in the good life city of Albany, Georgia, where we are discipling winners. We're training men and women how to become winners. So listen, we're glad to have you here if you would like to. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Church services each Sunday at 1030. And we'll be looking forward to see you here. God bless you now. Look to see you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in to The Ladder Rain. We certainly hope you have enjoyed your showering of blessing this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please contact EFVM at 229-436-7707. Again, the number is 229-436-7707. To help and support EFVM in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as becoming a partner with us, log on to our website at www.efvm.org. Join our social media family by following us on Twitter or liking us on Facebook. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to The Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, The Ladder Rain.